Taking you overseas now, Russian President Vladimir Putin gave his first on-camera remarks since this weekend's short-lived rebellion by the par uh, paramilitary Wagner Group fighting along his troops in Ukraine. Now, during this address, Putin claimed that Ukraine and the West wanted, quote, Russian soldiers to kill each other and Moscow's enemies miscalculated in their alleged support for the mercenary mutiny. Now, this despite President Biden insisting that the United States and NATO had nothing to do in that failed revolt. The Hill's editor-in-chief, Bob Cusack, joins us now. Uh, Bob, good morning to you. Uh, Putin blames Russia's enemies for the Wagner rebellion. Should we be worried Russia will retaliate against the U.S. or our European allies? Uh, good morning. You know, I don't think so. I mean, this is what Putin does. He's done it on a number of occasions. He always blames the West, and that's why I think it was important for the president to be out front and saying we had nothing to do with that. And then until there's proof, of course, uh, it's not a credible charge by Putin. So I don't think, I think this is more of a rhetorical attack than uh, a precursor to any other type of attack, like, you know, uh, potentially cyber attack, but but nothing beyond that. Okay. And, you know, as I was watching this weekend, Bob, I just was wondering how American viewers were taking this all in. Because this is not our war, because no US, U.S. troops are fighting in Ukraine, I think many Americans don't see how this will have any immediate impact on them. But in the long term, how could the failed mutiny in Russia affect everyday Americans here at home? Uh, well, as far as our involvement in Russia, and of course, it's costly because we're we've been giving billions more than any other country to Ukraine. But at the same time, uh, when when this war started, inflation spiked. It wasn't the only factor, but it certainly uh, did help supply chain uh, as well. So uh, inflation, gas prices, those are the, the everyday impact uh, of this. Now, as far as uh, this skirmish within Russia, which is definitely uh, the biggest threat to Putin that I've seen, uh, it's not going to affect uh, everyday Americans, but at the same time, over the long term, how this ends up is a huge global story. Yeah, because we do live in a world economy. And even though this rebellion failed, it's raised a lot of serious questions about Putin's grip on power there. I mean, this was the most direct threat he's seen since he was named leader in 99. What would the end of his reign in Russia mean for the United States and, and for the world? Well, it depends on how it goes down. There's a lot of concern because uh, obviously Russia is a nuclear state and, and Russia has been broken up before and there was a concern about nuclear weapons back then and certainly there would be the case here. Now, who would replace Putin? It's not surprising there's more and more pressure on Putin because remember, expectations were that Russia was going to go into Ukraine and take over the country basically within a couple months. That did not happen. Uh, and now there's a lot of death in Russia. Uh, reports vary on how many Russians have died, but obviously that's playing that's playing a big role in Putin's political standing. At the same time, he clearly uh, is still in control right now. And dur Bob, during an interview uh, right here on this show on Morning in America on Monday, one-time National Security Advisor John Bolton um, issued us grave warnings about Russia's post-Putin future. And I want to play this soundbite for you and get your take on the other side. One of the things we have to consider uh, is uh, while the war with Ukraine is still going on, if there's tension uh, within uh, Russia at leading to a weaker regime, you, you could see uh, possibilities for Russia itself to break apart. Yeah, so back to the nukes here. Russia has uh, obviously one of the world's largest stockpiles of nuclear weapons. But how would the breakup of the Russian Federation impact global nuclear security? And how worried should we be about Russian nukes falling into the wrong hands? Uh, well, this would be obviously a global concern, and I think uh, international groups would would try to help out as much as they can as far as securing, and I'm, I'm sure uh, U.S. Uh, government agencies would be both publicly and privately involved in, in that kind of effort. But that is a real concern uh, because there is – we don't know how this is going to end. Uh, there's been a, a split in the diplomatic community about whether – Russia should get anything and any type of uh, proposed compromise. Others say, no, Russia should get nothing. Uh, so I don't think there's any kind of ceasefire happening anytime soon. And, and so Putin's problems are going to continue. And that is a global concern. Yeah. And as Secretary of State Antony Blinken said, we have not seen the last act yet. Uh, Bob Cusack, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thanks.
Adrian Putin's. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.